hyper paranoia about uh, potential cannibalization to the point where they're hurting themselves. I'm talking about the movie industry and, and theatrical releases versus DVDs. Some of those issues motivate some of Rahul's work. Let's hear all about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, so this is a joint work with Anuj Kumar. Apparently, he doesn't need any more introduction. <laughs> Uh, but he's a doctoral student with which uh, you know we have worked worked on this project. So you know, Mike and I uh, actually have done you know bunch of work with the digitization of the movie and music industry, and especially with some focus on online piracy. Uh, I think the title is a little too broad. I think the question that we are going to address is a little bit more specific. In fact, there are two three different elements to it. I I I, I hope I can get to all all, all of them. Uh, you know, clearly there is a long tradition in marketing uh, and a long tradition in general in business of introduce, uh, introducing the project through various channels, through different versions, and kind of try to monetize, um, uh, uh, monetize the revenues. Uh, and, and as the media has become more and more digitized, especially with the music and the movies and with the iTunes and the VODs, there are more opportunities to actually uh, reach the customer through various platforms and various channels. Uh, and, and, the, and, the, and as the firms keep doing it, it also leads to then some sort of a conflict and some challenges regarding whether uh, these channels and these platforms will end up actually cannibalizing each other. But we are going to actually uh, you know, think a little bit about how introduction of a product or a termination of a good in one channel. Um, and the focus here is going to be the movie broadcast in HBO. And we are going to try to look at what happens in what happens when the movies start broadcasting in HBO, what happens to its sales or, or some other uh, output measures in other channels. As the movie enters in an HBO window, HBO kind of sort of forces the movie studios to take it out of its iTunes and video on demand. The second aspect of it, which uh, which which we also focus, is that the it seems like, and I will show you in a minute, uh, that the movie sales tend to be highly skewed. You know, few movies really make bulk of uh, sale, both at the box office and 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 uh, at the DVD level. You get this skewed where you know some movies are really preferred by a lot, and you know most of the movies are preferred by very few. So I'm also going to take a you know in this paper we are also going to spend some time and essentially argue that how movie broadcast on HBO kind of leads to you know more information and more awareness about these movies when you know the HBO starts kind of sort of broadcasting them you know people find them find about those movies and and it actually leads to uh, you know more DVD sales and more DVD rentals for that movie and for a highly popular movie really it doesn't matter because highly popular movies are already well, well known. So there is little information that needs to be diffused through HBO, uh, and it really doesn't have a very very large effect. Just to kind of give you a sense, a typical movie life cycle might look like this. So the movie gets released in a theater, um, and many times the piracy activity starts probably right about there, um, you know, sometimes even before. After about 20 to 40 weeks, um, the movie goes into a you know, bunch of different other platforms. So for example, the DVDs get released. Uh, video on demand, which is what we can watch typically on our televisions. Uh, EST is what the electronic sales. So typically, uh, iTunes would be an example of it. So that's where then the movies start becoming available. After some time, you know, again, 20 to 40 weeks, basically probably about an year from the movie release, I would say, then the movie enters in what is called as the HBO window. Um, and, 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 and then it stays in the HBO window for a certain amount of time, maybe about eight to nine months, maybe sometimes about a an year. And typically, by contract, when the movie enters in the broadcast window, uh, the, the EST and the VOD sales have to be terminated. So you can't really do a VOD anymore, or you can't buy an iTunes, at least not now. The movies tend to enter the broadcast window pretty randomly. And what I mean by, the, by randomness is, you know, surely they don't enter the same day uh, the movie is released. But once it's, you know, the movie can enter in a broadcast window anytime from, you know, 10 weeks after the DVD release to 60 weeks after the DVD release. If the smaller uh, studios has a movie which the HBO doesn't think is going to be viewed by a lot, then I expect that they probably get less revenue. The movie always enter the broadcast window the first day of the month, so they might decide that from January 1st, February 1st, March 1st, the movie will be in the broadcast window. The actual broadcast might occur two or three weeks later, too. So the actual broadcast might occur on the you know, third week of January, even though the movie has entered in the first day of January, and the sale of the other two goods basically has to stop. Okay, 
So let me just give you a sense. So the data, uh, we collected data on about you know, 315 movies over the period of about uh, two years. Uh, the movies were broadcast into any of these uh, 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 premium channels, HBO, Cinemax. So we have a week weekly DVD sale. So we know exactly how many DVDs were sold nationwide for each of the DVD from the very first day, from the very first week. Uh, we exactly know when the movie entered in the broadcast window. We know when it broadcasted. We have some idea about actually even the viewership. I've, I'll talk a little bit about it. We have then, you know, obviously some of the movie movie related information, uh, you know, box office sales, genre. You know, we can collect probably more information if we uh, if we want to. You can see that the movies enter any time. So from sometime 20 weeks after um, the the DVD release as far as sometimes even 55 weeks after the DVD release. And the median time is about 27 weeks. And again, it's in the appendix of the paper where we kind of you know, probably spend a couple of pages kind of convincing ourselves and, and the readers that this number seems to be completely uncorrelated with any of the movie characteristics, at least any of the reasonable observed, observed movie characteristics that we can see. You know, you rank the movie from you know number one to 314, and then you rank you know what their cumulative scales sales are going to look like. You know, you'll you'll get a curve which you can see is pretty skewed, which is few movies you know really dominate in the sense of sale. What is very instructive and you know probably expected is that the the box office sale and the DVD sale distribution literally map each other, which is. You know, the, the, the popular movies on the box office and the popular movies on the DVDs kind of sort of made the bulk of the sale. And, you know, they, they match almost perfectly. Um, and put it this way, what it seems to be suggesting is that as the movie enters in the DVD uh, in the HBO window, it's the less popular movies or kind of the middle popular movies which seems to actually gain much more because that's where the skewness has shifted uh, as opposed to the top movies. You know, which kind of sort of goes back to one of the argument that the who is the broadcast kind of sort of benefiting. It seems to benefit the movies, which are not so popular. And you know, the, one of the argument, you know, or one of the conjecture you can make is, well, the HBO then actually informs customers that there is this movie which exists and actually pretty good maybe. And you should go ahead and maybe go buy either the DVD rental or probably go buy, uh, you know, uh, uh, buy the DVD. So this is, you know, pretty pretty uh, pretty instructive. So what we find is that the uh, the sale of the movie, the DVD sale, and these are proportional, so it's a, because it's a log sale, so that also kind of sort of controls for some of the dispersion. Um, that that you know the movie sales essentially kind of go up um, right right at the blackout period, which is as soon as the movie actually enter the HBO window, but hasn't started broadcasting, but its advertisement has started, which is the movie is kind of going to come in in on a week or a couple of weeks and so on and so forth. Uh, it's the DVD sales actually go up, and once the movie actually start broadcasting, the DVD sales go up even more. And you know, I don't have the graph right now. This effect persists almost up to 25 to 30 weeks. And if you if you believe our numbers, then this basically means that um, you know this 22 percent kind of sort of suggests uh, about 464 additional DVD sales, you know, per movie per week only because of the broadcasting, which is the movie entered in the broadcast window, and it actually le led to a higher increase in the DVD sales that you otherwise, uh, uh, than you will otherwise get. So the argument is that somehow people are discovering it, getting more aware about it. So we try to plot it with the Google trend, that is what people are kind of looking for, and it's surprising like, that it matches perfectly. When the movie, as soon as the movie starts, you know, kind of broadcasting or getting into the HBO window, the people searching for that movie term, uh, you know, basically kind of spikes up quite a bit and actually persistently remains, you know, high, which kind of probably seems to suggest that something is going on. You know, people are getting more interested in it. However, you want to kind of think about it, and this may be just kind of one trend of it. I guess if one looks some blogging activity, might find kind of sort of similar trends. So we kind of split the movie based on the DVD sale, like across the four quartiles. What you will find is, or what we find is that it's not the top movies where you are going to see any significant sales increase. In fact, it's completely insignificant. It's just the third and the fourth quartile is really where, you know, proportionally higher increase in the sale, you know, that, that's kind of sort of occurring, which is again probably somewhat consistent with what we've been trying to see, that probably these are the movies which are probably being benefited by broadcasting, and maybe people are coming to know more about them, and that leads them to go buy uh, their associated DVDs. 
we do it like a, for a smaller studio versus the major studio. Maybe you know they have a differential uh, promotional ability, and you know you see basically very similar result, which is it's the it's the it's the smaller studios which disproportionately benefit from um, this window broadcast as opposed to um, the to the major studio. I was thinking of the question: When do you determine the popularity of a movie? Is it the beginning of the broadcast window? No, no. We can start from box office. There is a, we can start from the DVD sale, or we can stop just week before uh, the broadcast. I think this is right at the at the box office level, okay. which is th this is the top twenty five percent of the box office, and these are the bottom twenty twenty five percent of the box office. Um, and and we know that the DVD when the when the when they go on the DVD it matches almost perfectly with the box office, which is you know, the movie which sells more on box office is also sells more on DVD. You know, once we kind of believe our you know that there is some information diffusion, there's some awareness going on, one can actually do something structural here, which is you know kind of sort of build a little bit of a model that is the movie discovery is a function of certain parameters, including the past sale and mostly the the C, which is the the broadcasting. So the argument is. The broadcasting the movie leads to more discovery, which is the probability people will discover, and that discovery eventually leads to more sale. Um, I don't have time to kind of go through the model. The only good thing is, or at least the one good thing is, the C parameter that we estimate almost matches pretty nicely with our reduced form estimate, which is it translates to about you know 504 additional DVD, which is kind of nicely translates. So. Take it for what it is worth. Um, uh, you know that's why, as I said, we kind of sort of try to run um, where am I? So we had actually a sample of, you know, only nine movies, frankly. But then we had actually detailed information on what their VOD sales were earlier and what their iTunes sales were earlier, and the data was available at a DMA level. So which was the same movie, but now we had you know these 200 uh, you know the, the DMAs, and we knew their sales in each of the DMA. We also knew you know, their, their VOD sale, which is how many people were actually buying VODs, how many people had uh, uh, iTunes sale. And then we also had their piracies. That is, we also had information on how many, uh, how many uh, downloads are occurring for that movie in the DMA for that particular week. So what basically we tried to look at what happens to their piracy and what happens to their DVD sale after the movie kind of sort of enters. And what I'm really interested in is that where people are substituting. So we know in a particular DMA, how many iTunes sales were occurring? In a particular DMA, how many VOD sales were occurring? And we are trying to look at, now the iTunes is not available. You know, by, by contract, the iTunes are gone. Where are people going to? Are these people going to go buy uh, DVDs, go rent DVDs, or these people might just go pirate? What we find is that, that the DMAs, which actually had a higher high tunes, um, pre-HBO broadcast, um, you know, you see some evidence that those are the DMAs where the piracy has gone up after the broadcast. Remember, the iTunes has stopped. So people who had to buy iTunes, they don't have that choice anymore. And it seems to suggest that maybe some of them are gravitating towards you know, piracy. You know, a couple of implications. Uh, obvious implication being that maybe the HBOs and the movie studios ought to renegotiate a little bit. Clearly, there are strong spillovers going on, which is the, the DVD sales seem to be benefiting quite a bit. Um, maybe there is an opportunity to promote the movie at the same time, maybe in terms of you know on its Amazon, or maybe even playing a little bit with the prices that now the movie is entering in the HBO, we kind of sort of know that it's going to have a demand and it's a DVD window, and maybe there is an opportunity. We know that nothing of that sort is being going on because the nine, week, the nine movies that we selected, we kind of looked at that in detail, and that's good. Nothing of that sort is going on. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to identify anything. Academically, I think the, our structural kind of you know, gives a sense of you know, ties together that the broadcasting leads to more awareness, leads to more sale, and then we can kind of quantify what is the value of awareness. That is, if you have 1% people more aware about your product, that how much does it translate to sales, at least in the sense of a movie, and then you know, kind of have an implication for what the promotional efforts might or might not look like, and you know, a little bit on the roll-up. So that's all I had to say. Thank you. If well, let's take this opportunity to thank our okay, speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.